Rod Weber. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, how's it going? Uh, you know, I'm struggling today. I feel like uh, they, they, I've just been hit on too many fronts with uh, stories that make me upset. Yeah. Um, it's back to back, and uh, it, it goes from one graphic video from, uh, to the next, from the uh, Alton Sterling thing to the, to the guy who was uh, shot in his car yesterday. Um, on both videos were gruesome. I'm just, I'm into graphic nature. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, gruesome, like, uh, you know, and all of uh, we, we have and not like it should matter. And the, the thing that keeps making me angry when I talk about, you know, this is what's happening now. It's really the advent of technology is the difference between something that's been happening, uh, you know, for quite some time. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's this is the stand that these types of things are happening all the time. And yet you never hear anyone else's side of the story because it's only spun one way legally. And that's the end of it. Uh, yes, and uh, I mean, that's what I've been saying for a long, long time, having been out to rally, is that, uh, uh, you know, as it's, it's, it's much as uh, I, I have issues with the way that iPhones and the smartphones are made in, in, sh in sweatshops sure. overseas, in, in some ways you have to say, you know, God bless them for what they're revealing, uh, not only here in America, but all over the world. Uh, I mean, because, I mean, you look at it, and it's not just the, the routine lynching of black men across America. There's all the, uh, the turmoil in the Middle East, uh, these riots that are going on in, in France and in Mexico. And, um, it, I mean, it seems like, you know, the, the entire world is at odds with itself, um, and the people are at each other's throats. And... Uh, I mean this. I mean this latest thing with the the FBI releasing, uh, you know, the, these papers or, or this this announcement they made about Hillary Clinton. Sure. I, I mean that that's got everyone else at each other's throats. And really, yeah. I think. I, the, I by the think way, Democrats real real quick, they, yeah, the emer they had an emergency uh, session, uh, uh, an, in uh, an an emergency inquisition of the FBI director today in Congress. You know, uh, being on the West Coast, I did not know that. Uh, what what happened? I mean, essentially, uh, he was uh, brought before uh, the House to, uh, you know, satisfy questions that they all had. And yet it was like a bipartisan every other turn that was taken. I mean, it was rapid fire. Everyone got five minutes. And as far as I know, that's a Gary Oldman, everyone. And uh, it was like representative after representative, Democrat, Republican, well, you know, like some of them shaking their head and others saying, you know, like, I can't believe that they're doing this to you. You know, you, you serve your country and you're a Republican. So, I mean, I don't know. It was, it was uh, and, they, and they were referring to it as, as the political theater that it is. But uh, essentially, they, they all wanted to, uh, you know, make it very clear, all of the arguments and put it out there, see whatever sound bites they can get as fuel for the, uh, you know, the GOP fire. Uh, that's the that is going to be the fuel that runs their uh, campaign engine is this, uh, you know, is what ha is what we learned from this particular case about Hillary's emails as to whether or not she's too incompetent uh, in, in to in their argument to be commander in chief. Oh, so they're making the incompetence issue and not so much about it being lying? Uh, you know, they can't really hold it to the fact that, uh, you know, the FBI doesn't feel that, that, they, that she lied to them. <laughs> and and they, can't really com they can't really comment on, uh, you know, it's not their place to have any opinion about what they may have said to the people, what she may have said uh, to the people. Okay, I, I can understand that position uh, it's it's very interesting all they had to do was turn on a television set to see that she was lying i mean they're playing these videos back to back to back so you know her saying i only had one device and then i mean you you cut to the fbi saying she had multiple devices then you cut to hillary clinton saying oh well yeah no I, I knew that this was the best way to secure it and then the fbi saying it was absolutely unsecure right. um and then there's the 30,000 emails, and of the 30,000, there's 110 that were, you know, possibly uh, sure. breachable. And I, which I, which I, actually, I, I, uh, they, they painstakingly broke down as, like, what is it, one uh, hundredth of uh, one percent of the total emails. 
that, you know, a, right. a, a busy person getting emails. They also okay, went yeah. so far as to make a certain distinction that uh, in the manual for uh, for uh, the classified documents, how we treat classified documents, they are identified by a heading at the top of the page that says this is a classified document. Now, uh, that is what it says in the manual. There's no actual reference to anything being like uh, they should know that when a paragraph is headed by a C in front of that little particular that part- that piece of information that is referred to. But the argument is is that theoretically. You know, that could be, uh, you know, she could not be aware of that, or it could also be buried, you know, like she might not have even okay, seen so, it. So, so the other argument that I've heard, uh, and again, I'm on the West Coast, and so I just, um, and I'm waking up late here, and so I missed anything that was going on this morning, but the other argument that I've been hearing is that, oh, well, uh, when when you're in government, everything is marked classified, so it's it's kind of just a running joke. Um, but I just, Yeah, that, that one's not going to hold up. That's that's a problem. That's a problem. I mean, so and so so in, in the article where I was I was picking that one out, they they say, well, the only things that you should really be worried about are the ones that say top secret. I say, you know, forget about all these things. Let's just just focus on the issue that she lied. She lied. So, I mean, she, I think that's what I think this election is going to be based upon the feelings uh, more than than the facts. For American people. Well, sure, um, and, and perhaps Rod, the, that feelings are coloring this because uh, something that came to light as I was watching this, uh, you know, these the various, uh, you know, congressmen have their five minutes of questions, uh, and uh, you know, one thing came out was that certainly Colin Powell, when he was Secretary of State, in his book, uh, admits to having his own private server in much the same fashion. This is like a whole, like before even there was a controversy, I'm imagining. And uh, it may have been practice for Condoleezza Rice as well. Hillary Clinton per, uh, could very well possibly be not the first Secretary of State to have involved this uh, practice, but yet she's the only one, theoretically, if that's true, being like, you know, run out on a rail for it. And that seems obviously like, uh, you know, like the Jets uh, being aware of the Patriots filming because they filmed themselves. You know what I mean? It's kind of like... I, I cry foul a little bit there. Uh, yeah, and so I uh, I've, listen. I've I've gotten all these sort of you know the the arguments have come in uh, to me. Uh, I, I guess because I'm out on the road doing the political thing, uh, people want to make the point to me. Um, and so I've heard a lot of these things in public and in private. And again, I think it just it goes back to I mean, for the people by and large, it is going to be about as I just said, feelings and. So, uh, you know, re- right. regardless of whether Colin Powell did it before, um, I think that that's, that's, not, that's not what's going to be of concern to, say, the Republicans, which, again, is going to be irrelevant in, in the sense, uh, I mean, uh, right, but I, I, get, I guess my point be, is, go ahead, go ahead. I just it's going to be for the Bernie Kratz. Right. It's going to be for the Bernie Kratz. Um, so, and that's what's going to split the, the, the Democratic side, and that's what's going to make it uh, much more easy for Donald Trump to win. Um, so. I, I guess uh, just to clarify why I would uh, illustrate Colin Powell point there, it's because like this might be actually not as crazy a thing, but because of people's feelings for Hillary, it's turned into uh, you know like the the single act that proves she's the devil. I, I'm all over that. I, I don't I don't think that this makes her the devil. Um, I, I I don't I don't think that these these emails is necessarily a horrible thing whatsoever. Um, really, I was with Barney when he, w- during the debate, said, enough about the damn email. Right. Um, uh, but on on the other hand, since I haven't had the time to read 30,000 emails, right. I don't know what's in there. I'm not the expert on it. I don't think any of us are going to be expert well, on it. You know who's the, F- so the, the, the expert was, is very clear to be the FBI. Uh, they're the ones right. who spent a year with their best people, and that was you know repeated many times. These were not like uh, interns. This is a year with their best people going through all of these emails. And so uh, as far as they're concerned, we can move past this. We're not going to charge her with a crime, but we will say that there was negligence and that she was extremely careless. Now, that to me is the one actual legitimate uh pearl that they can use and say this is true this is her at a responsibility uh, with a you know with a job with responsibilities and she uh was careless. Who wants a yeah, well, and, 
Uh, again, that's why, uh, you know, for me, I kind of, I immediately just moved right beyond this. I think um, that if, if the FBI is not going to move forward on it and, and that no one's going to, as you say, ride her out of rail, uh, ride her out of town on a rail, um, really the discussion ought to be how it's going to uh, affect the election. Right. And, that, um, and that's what uh, it is. It's ammunition, certainly. Well, right, but so I guess that's why I'm just tying it into the whole thing of feelings, and then it's going to be cutting the footage of lie versus lie and uh, Hillary versus FBI. Um, and really, it just it seems to me it makes her an unviable candidate. At, I mean, which I I thought this was going to be the case months ago. Right. Simply because of this investigation, it made her unviable yeah. from the start. And, Bern, my, and my, Bernie my, Sanders is still hanging and banging for that very reason. Exactly. And, um, you know, but I mean, who, who am I? I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I, I make the point often that I, I often read far less than a lot of people because I'm almost in my car all the time going from one rally to the next. Right. Um, so a, any number of people, and, and you are as well, I can tell you've read a hell of a lot more uh, because you're able to be in front of your computer and get all the latest and greatest of all the facts. Yeah, I guess well, sadly. I'm trying yeah. to I'm basing my reports on are the feelings of, you know, the, the people who are going to these things. And, and then, of course, people come back and say, oh, well, you're just getting the feelings and the opinions of the most extreme people. And I really don't think that's the case. I mean, if you go to Donald Trump rallies, um, a lot of it is, is the whole celebrity factor. So you get a whole ton of people, uh, a huge cross-section of the population, who are there just to be there. And, and some of them uh, before he was the presumptive nominee, were very much undecided. A lot of them were Ted Cruz supporters. Right. A lot of them are Bernie people. And um, and I, it just it keeps coming back over and over again. I mean, the thing that they dislike the most is hilary. I mean, they have this. Right. I mean, it's it's all over the artwork everywhere. Is that she's a liar, liar, liar. Um, and whether or not she is, I mean, to, to me, that was never the issue. I'm keep trying to be a neutral reporter of what's yeah. going on. Like on I, I'd, li I'd like to interject at this point, right? Like to me, this whole, uh, you know, the chain of her saying this, and it's very, it's very Clinton. Like, you know, the whole, I did not sleep with that woman. You can, where you see them say <laughs> one thing and, uh, it, and, uh, it evolves through like, you know, documented interviews, like opinions and politics involves all of those Hillary tapes are out there. There's just, it just sounds to me like another one of these tapes. It's like none of those tapes seem to, stop her from getting this far what's the damage of like one more reel of her just you know having one uh, one saying one thing and watching it sort of like become another thing oh, over time here, here, here's the damage be, be behind one more reel because this might be the straw that breaks the camel's back what they keep talking about right. also is pumas last time around that so that's party unity my ass is what puma stands <laughs> for p-u-m-a um and everyone says oh yeah everyone got in line Last time around, when it was Barack versus Hillary, and this time around, I think that uh, it really, really, when speaking to my, uh, as they call them, progressive friends, uh, it everyone is just saying, no, burn the house down. The people on the Bernie side of things are saying, no effing way that we will vote for Hillary Clinton after this. Right. And I've, I, I've been saying it for months, I, that it's going to keep going that way for the Bernie crap. I really feel that way. Uh, but again, now, now I'd like to use this as a way of switching gears because, right, it, it all comes down to like Donald Trump, who had a day where he could score some points, but he, he, you know, I don't know if he was aware that he shouldn't be comporting himself in like, you know, like I got a lot of time to kill, so like let me just, uh, you know, spend <laughs> like a like like an hour like ranting against the media. Like he was picked up live because everyone wanted to hear what he had to say about the the, the Hillary thing. You know, and he could really have, you know, scored some points there. But it, it had the, it, it, you and I well know, and you have been to so many of these uh, rallies and know better than anyone, the lunacy uh, involved with a full Trump rally. Like his, his, his candor is, is essentially, he's just flying off the cuff and, he, and it's outrageous. And I watched, like I was tuning into CNN 
to watch actual you know coverage of Alton Alton Sterling of anything that was happening uh, with with Hillary Clinton and yep. I ended up uh, just like frozen in horror watching like an hour of a live feed because I feel like the the program director at CNN was doing the same thing like I can't shut this off right now this is outrageous this is maybe they're just figuring out that this is how he talks but he he really lost points that day again like maybe he can keep losing points because he he starts he spends like an hour on the fact that like uh you know i can't believe they thought that was a star of david you know it's a, I, to me it's a sheriff star i mean look at it it's a sheriff star it's a star it's a star and then you know it's just like that's a sheriff star and then he, and he'll say a couple other things and he'll just get back to it i can't believe it i mean that looks like a sheriff star it's a sheriff star i'm mad i'm mad they took it down you know and it's like it's it's, it's outrageous go ahead but, but having done documentary myself and worked in radio, and obviously you work in radio, uh, I mean, the, the most dangerous thing is turning on a recording device and letting someone's inner thoughts uh, just go into the echo chamber. Right. If you don't have someone to go back and forth against um, and you're just fili- filibustering against dead air, Right. Um, every <laughs> ridiculous thought that you might have is going to be out there, and that's why his tone is like, yeah, no, I don't know, uh, what? you might just start yeah. or me, you got it from Microsoft Word, you know, what's the big deal? Uh, just right. moving on, I put the circle over and everything's fixed, right? Right, my, my listeners right? are well familiar stuff, with this. Right? Yeah. Right? Believe me, everything's all right. Right. No, I, you know, I, have, a, I have a Jewish uh, granddaughter, it's, you know, married in the family, so everything's okay, it doesn't matter that the KKK endorsed me, it doesn't matter... Um, uh, you know, about any of these other things. I, Hillary Clinton's not even Jewish. If I was being anti-Semitic, I would have put Bernie Sanders on there. What's the big deal? I'm not a racist people. Right. I, 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 love, I, love, I, love, I love I love. I love. my Jews. I, I love my Jews. Hey, is that my African-American there? Yeah, uh, yeah. Get, get him over here. Bring all my minorities on here. They love me. The gays, hashtag ask the gays, they love Donald Trump. Yeah, ask the gays, who, who, you know, who loves you, baby. Uh, so yeah, t- take me through a little bit. Uh, you know, we still got a little bit of time. Uh, where uh, where you've been lately? Because I feel like you went across the country, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I actually accidentally did go across the country. I, you know, um, I'm. I can't remember the last time uh, that uh, we spoke at exactly what rally I was at at that point. But I think it was before. Uh, yeah, it was before Boston, and then like after Boston, I think I saw you heading to Arizona. Or was that before? <laughs> Okay, fine. So uh, I will try to get you up to speed, uh, or the listeners up to speed. So I had a court date in um, in Pennsylvania, uh, Harrisburg, uh, because I was arrested at a Donald Trump rally there a couple months ago. And so I hopped in the car just thinking that I was going to take care of this court date. Uh, they banged it out in five minutes, which I was shocked by. Uh, basically, the, the judge came on and and asked the the police officer to come up for the you know the first person that had been arrested and it was you know she's the judge said you know what i mean did you actually witness what this person did and the cop said well no i wasn't actually there i'm just the one who made the report and she just banged the gavel and said the case dismissed and so it was one after the other like that and actually the first person who was there had hired a lawyer who's a representative uh, for the ACLU. Right. And when it was my turn to get up there, of course, I'm going to be the big loud mouth and say, no, 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 hold on. I do have one thing to say. And he had actually jumped in and in a split second, uh, we agreed that he would be my lawyer for the day, um, which is the uh, first time I've uh, gotten a lawyer that quick. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, he yeah, basically he, uh, he, he, he choked me out and said, no, 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 uh, no if, if you give any information whatsoever, uh, you know, the judge may be forced uh, to not dismiss it like the other. So I just, I, I bit my tongue. Good for you. Uh, and uh, she banged the gavel and I was out. And then, of course, so Donald Trump announced the thing in Pittsburgh the next day. And so so they're selling Confederate flags there. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, I filmed this new phenomenon. Um uh, Playboy magazine was there. I ended up in a thing about that being the lone protester giving out flowers at the Donald Trump rally in Pittsburgh, which was so drastically different from the other Pittsburgh rallies. And I, now, now that I'm going through it, I, I do remember we spoke about this, so I'm just going to gloss over that. Then sure. after that, um, they they announced the uh, stuff in uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, uh, then Texas, and. Um, so, it's like going on tour. Uh, it's like going on tour to see the dead. It's like new shows. <laughs> it's like we're going across uh, the country, folks. It's like all right, get the camper. 
instead of the Grateful Dead, the Hateful Dead. <laughs> yes. Um, but so yeah, so uh, down in Atlanta, there was uh, definitely a bunch of arrests there. It started. It was pouring rain, so all the protesters were out in the rain, folks shouting at each other, um, uh, soaking wet. We, you know, with these uh, police officers with all the guns at the ready, and I still haven't posted any footage of that stuff because it was um, uh, it's very very difficult to pick out any of the things that were or where the audio came out because I had to use my my GoPro, for anyone doesn't know, for my kind of, it's got like plastic shield that goes over it. So kind of, it, it's you know the audio is kind of rough, uh, you know, when you're doing that sort of thing. Uh, but there, yep, there's definitely a bunch of arrests there, and it was the first time I tried to bring down the tensions. I did this thing where I got on the megaphone and did a group ohm, yes, um, you know, yes. like in meditation. Ohm, and um. It actually, uh, it you know, it, it brought down the tensions a bit. Um, you know, and, Rod, I got uh, I got to interject right there. I saw a couple uh, examples of you bringing the ohm in front of these like hostile situations, lines of cops, like angry people, uh, all kinds of radical, like a radical, uh, you know, homegrown loonies. Uh, it, it, it had this strange effect on them. <laughs> it really did. Like they didn't know what to make of it, and uh, you know, maybe they. They should have been angry at like a hippie with like a you know giving them like some like uh, you know uh, foreign uh, religion, but you know religious practice. But somehow it did what it's supposed to do and kind of worked. It was funny. Yeah, I was I was surprised myself. <laughs> um, I, it was kind of when I first did it in Atlanta. It was I, I think I did it kind of just. I, I was just, I was pulling at straws. I was, uh, I was reaching. I was <laughs> it's a little tongue in cheek. It might annoy like a, like a hateful person. You never know. But I, I was wondering where it would go. It worked. <laughs> even, yeah, even more than, but I mean, I mean that, that was the thing and it, and it worked. And so then when I ended up in Dallas and like you said, there's these rows of cops on horses and, and, uh, you know, with their guns and they're, and they're there, uh, you know, with, the express intention to clear out all the people. And that becomes very intimidating to people when they, they get on their horses and they slowly move the, the line forward and they're yelling at everyone to move. Yeah. And of course you get the more defiant factions in, in there and actually the more militant people on the left, which uh, is a little bit of concern to me. Um, and they, they're, they don't care that everyone's got, you know, their guns at the ready. And so, I, I, it just seemed like it was time once again, get out that group <laughs> home. And it actually, so, I mean, there's a little bit of laughter. And then once you start doing it and when others join in, it, it, it brings it down. Well, and, you know, the groovy thing is the I, ohm represents like, uh, the sound of our oneness of the oneness of all things. So like when the ohm is brought into the present situation, when like oneness is what we need right now, like it kind of, maybe it like flicks people in neutral. It's like a genetically encoded response that we sort of like, just sort of like, uh, get peaceful for a second. I don't know. It's fascinating. It, it it is. It's electric. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you can feel not not just the you know the oneness between the people there, but there's there's a static electricity that kind of sparks in the air when that huge group is there. And I, you can't tell me the horses didn't feel it. You can't tell me that the cops don't feel it. Um, uh, just a, a massive crowd basically saying, "We're not here to harm you," to the police officers and the horses. That they're just there to speak their mind. And I, uh, you know, I, I was overwhelmed by the, the the magic that it it brought, and I'm 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 so happy to have uh, to you know to to stumble to, uh, you know upon this this magical thing, which uh, you know can bring peace to some of these rallies and hopefully avoid violence. Yeah, now, Rod, uh, we are coming up against it. Uh, I have a little a little bit of extra time. Perhaps it's uh, I think uh, safe to say that Nash won't be here today on account of his birthday. Happy birthday, Mike Nashawati, uh, you know, from everyone here at WEMF. Uh, but, you know, just, Happy birthday. just real quick, you know, I saw you took a picture that uh, seemed to go uh, pretty viral, as far as I could tell, where you, uh, you know, had filled up the barrels of uh, some Trump supporters, like armed Trump supporters, but peacefully armed Trump supporters. Uh, you can explain how that concept works. But because uh, it made sense when I read it, but uh, you you know like uh, where you had uh, you know went uh, down to the level of the barrel and started putting flowers inside the barrel is a very strong image, and uh, I think uh, you know that, that how did that transpire? 
Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, it was a group called Bear, B-A-I-R, which is a Bureau Against Islamic Relations. Um, and so I, you know, I, I started talking to the guy and he, he, he explained, um, in his backward sort of way, oh, oh no, oh, no, 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 it's, it's, it's not all Islam. Uh, we're not racist. And, uh, which, I, you know, okay, I, uh, I was, uh, I was at the stage where I was, you know, trying not to make any judgments and, you know, perhaps just try to get what's going on in their head and, you know, try to bring out the good in everyone. And again, uh, to try to get, to remind them to stay peaceful because there was a lot of, uh, inflamed emotions that are, again, I keep saying that selection is going to be about emotion. And when there's, you know, a large group of men that are Trump supporters and they're all there sporting very, you know, large uh, assault rifles or machine guns, depending on how you like to say it, um, yeah, I'm going to do everything in my power to try to try to ease tensions. And so I, since I had brought a bunch of flowers, I said, well, you know, this is man, um, I know it's going to sound weird, but, you know, we've talked to each other a little bit here. Um, I, you know, would it be cool if we, uh, if we got a picture of me putting a flower in the barrel? And so, I mean, what happened was, I, un, unbeknownst to me, there was a photographer there also uh, from the Dallas Morning News, and he snapped the photo, and that was the one that actually went viral. Right. It wasn't, it was, it wasn't my photo. But yeah, I actually, what can you do? I was, run, I was running my GoPro, which was video, um, and so hours later, um, why, this was actually right after the thing with the horses. Uh, he found me in the crowd. The photographer found me in the crowd and said, "Yeah, this thing is just spreading like wildfire. Can I interview you?" And I said, "Yeah, of course." And um, so I sh- I shared the video with them also, and that went even more viral because now this picked it up. And I I, I don't want to get all to the whole um, you know spreading of, of viral videos, but well, I mean, sure. It's a, but if anyone mean, wants to uh, check in with what you've been up to, RodWeber dot com or look him up on social media, uh, Facebook. Uh, it, He's got some, uh, and I got to I got to give credit to you know Bernie Boston who took the original photo. I mean, obviously it's a you know a, a recreation of you know w- what went on in Kent State and a lot of other uh, you know hippies uh, you know doing this sort of thing back in the '60s. And uh, you know, a question that people ask me is like, you know, uh, w- you know why the why the retro thing? And uh, my answer to that is, you know, why did it ever go away? Right. We never I, we haven't learned anything apparently. Right. <laughs> We're still there. I, I mean. The, I mean, these, the flowers, the ohms, uh, any of these, these techniques that I'm, I'm bringing to things, um, they work. And uh, we, we should have never forgot them. It's, it's something that peace activists should always be out there doing. And don't worry about the fact that it seems kind of ridiculous. Uh, get over that. It is right. a little bit ridiculous, but I'm telling you, putting flowers in people's guns or just you know, giving flowers to people that are angry or giving them hugs, I mean, it's a real thing. It works. Yeah. It's a powerful it image. It, it, it's, it speaks volumes when you see a picture like that. It, it makes you think. It makes you feel. Oh, Rod, I, Rod, I, 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 got, I got to wrap, wrap it up real quick. I wanted to, get, yeah. I wanted to steer it uh, right back uh, just one last time towards uh, the, the shooting of uh, police, uh, white police shootings of black men who uh, apparently uh, were just minding their own business. Um, when it comes to this, my kind of thought is you can boil it down. We recognize this is nothing new. We're getting to see it. It makes us crazy. Uh, we sh- should, it should always make you crazy. Uh, it, it, what we need to do, obviously, uh, is start talking about wholesale police uh, practice reform. Maybe, uh, you know, like uh, I made a point once to say that if, you know, you're looking for background checks into guns, but it's people that kill people, like guns don't kill people. So they say, well, then maybe we need to, uh, you know, look into uh, the people, obviously, a little bit more that we entrust with these guns, especially the ones that we pick to protect us. We Perhaps we need to look a little closer at them, and perhaps we also need to... Just, you know, make sure we find perhaps a more, like, unified American po- policing policy instead of, like, leaving it so vaguely to states to take care of their own. We need to uh, police the police. We need to find ways of uh, improving this situation. Uh, and, the, and the real problem I'm seeing here is that, uh, you know, like, we saw how hard it is to even get, like, a slight modification to a gun bill. And here we are. Uh, we need to revamp the police system. Is there a prayer that we can actually accomplish that? Uh, yes, uh, when I marched in uh, Ferguson for Mike Brown, or actually it was Jefferson City, I think, from Ferguson, uh, Jefferson City's capital, but uh, the, the ACLU there 
um, I spent some time with after all that. Um, and uh, Nimrod Chapel, who's you know, one of the guys there, um, who was explaining to me that what they're trying to do is pass a law um, which actually has citizen units uh, which police the police and give them reviews, and they can m- make or break, uh, you know, police officers who are, you know, behaving badly, in theory, if they get this passed. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what the status of that is. Um, pretty sure it has not gone through otherwise I would have heard from it uh, heard about it from him um, but I, 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 I do believe that legislation like that can be put in place yeah and that I feel like uh, we need to start uh, focusing on that just as passionately as everyone's trying to get these uh, you know uh, gun policy amendments uh, you know added and modified uh, you know I feel like we need to be talking about uh, demanding uh, you know change in police policy. Uh, Rod, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, I applaud you once again for staying safe out there. Congratulations on, uh, you know, getting your case dismissed. Uh, you know, you're doing the right thing out there. You're not causing any problems. In fact, in profound ways, you're, you're de-escalating, uh, <laughs> conflicts. So, uh, you know, I, I, I applaud you for doing your, what you're doing. And I can't wait to see, uh, when this election season's over, I'm sure you're going to take a break and put all this footage together and make one, one very powerful documentary. And I can't wait to see that. Thank you so much. As always, thanks for having me on and God bless and peace and love to everyone out there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And they appreciate it. What's all uh, and I want can, can, can I engage you in a radio ohm for just a couple seconds with me? Um, uh, yes. All right, thank Let's, you. Oh. 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 Yeah, right. You like oh. that? You 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 didn't want a home. You were digging my home, dude. I dig your yeah, no, home, Rod. Uh, and this well, is all very I, I, real. I, I didn't know if we were running out of time. I mean, I'm I'm happy to own home all day. Yeah, uh, but you know, yeah. What what what's time to an home? Okay, you know what I mean. All right, but you know, you're right. I, you know, we can do this all day. Uh, you know, maybe uh, we'll make it a practice next time you call in. Yeah, absolutely. And the last thing I, I really want to put out there is just uh, sending a lot of love to the families of Alton Sterling and uh, Philando Castile. Absolutely. Thank you, Rod. All right. Peace and love and alms, man. Peace.